Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Mr. Vikram Murthy for our individual submission. Mr. Vikram Murthy is the director of Univac Environment Systems Private Limited for Unitary and Applied HVAC Systems. He is partner for Tropical Air Conditioning and Refrigeration, training HVACR professionals and representation of AHRI for certification of HVAC equipment. Coming with an engineering background from, from IIT around five decades of experience in HVAC industry. He is regional lecturer at RAL ASHRE. Mr. Bikram is presidential member of ISHRE and past president of ASHRE, Mumbai chapter and Rotary Club of Mumbai Film City. Mr. Murthy is associated as member with Technology Task Force, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs at Government of India. Today, we are honored to have Mr. Murthy as a guest speaker, and he will talk on technologies for climate control inside public spaces. So without further ado, let's welcome Mr. Murthy. All right. So we'll, uh, I'm just presenting a few slides uh, to show some examples of thermal comfort in public spaces around the world and, of course, in India. So here is a picture of a repurposed church somewhere in the Netherlands. So it's a large building, uh, it's a large church, and obviously all the, the pews and where the people sit in the church and the altar is no longer there. It's converted to a public library where people can come and read and sit for some time and uh, gain knowledge, interact, and so on and so forth. So the church, by virtue of its design, it has a huge thermal mass. So it is very difficult for cold to come in or for heat to come in. Right, So that itself gives the building a very good uh, building skin. And so thereafter, the energy required to cool it or to heat it is minimum. And most of the cooling is done by displacement ventilation because the people are only at five or six feet above the ground. Right, We need not cool this whole space. We need to just to cool places which are close to the ground. And the building lends itself very well to being used as a different purpose public space. So here is a, uh, this is looking like a large fort or something, uh, looking like a cave construction building. It's actually a museum in China. So it has very few openings to outside, which are windows. There are only some slits to allow light to come in at the appropriate angle, depending on the time of the day. It has very thick walls, so it remains very comfortable most of the year because you're going inside to view the exhibits. You're not going inside there to start working and looking out of the window. So this large building, again, because of large thermal mass, is a very specially designed building for its purpose of being a museum. Here is a building which has got this huge, big, uh, irregular shape shade. So as you know, uh, the roofs of the buildings admit a huge amount of heat, as well as by having extensions over the building, you can cut down the angle of the sun for most times of the day, except when it comes below the horizon, or not below the horizon, but uh, below your view of sight. So this provides a wonderful cooling by reflecting and deflecting all the heat of the solar energy from above. Here is our own airport in Mumbai. This is the Shivaji Chhatrapati Terminal 2 Airport designed by Skidmore, Owings and Merrill. So this building is a wonderful building. It sits like looking like a giant spacecraft in my opinion. But of course, it is uh, it is uh, designed with the inspiration of a peacock. And so it has this wonderful uh, peacock kind of impressions all over the place. And it has a huge amount of space, which is reflecting heat of high emissivity. So heat doesn't get into the building. It is shaded beautifully, so it emits a huge amount of light, but very little heat because the extensions of the shading go well beyond the interior spaces. And the cooling is all by displacement ventilation. That means we are cooling from very low heights. So the cooling and the comfort and the return air all remains six to eight feet above ground level. And we don't cool the spaces far above that. It has very good control systems, very good operational efficiencies. And those of you who have been there will surely find it to be a building of good thermal comfort. This is a building of a museum inside a, a garden. It's a visitor center. As you can see, the building has got converted to the land of the grass. And so the grass and the landscape above is giving thermal comfort on the roof. And so this is an example of how they've blended the nature along with the building 
The trees, of course, provide shade. The, the trees provide evaporative cooling. The trees keep a place very comfortable by the natural process of nature. Apart from that, the cooling requirements in the building of heating and cooling will be minimal. And obviously, it will vary as the number of people who are visiting. So with public places, we have this big advantage of variation of loads. And so that has to be very well monitored to control this uh, comfort inside. This is a building which appears to have a lot of thermal load because of its glass. It's a library in Seattle, in Washington. It does a large amount of glass, but very cleverly designed uh, angles of those glass to admit uh, light from the angles where, like the north, the north and the northeast, you get light, but you don't get uh, the sun directly coming in. So by clever use of all these angles and glass of very low uh, thermal uh, sensible gain, they are able to control this building, which is a very, a very unique building for people to be inside and enjoy the uh, open spaces, the light. And it's a public library. So in America, uh, anyone can walk into a library, study, read over there, as indeed in India also. In large, uh, in the older times of India, people attended the Asiatic Library in Mumbai in large numbers. Of course, now we have to, we normally read on our laptops and screens. This is also a museum of African American history in Washington, D.C. It has got the beauty of the Jali right outside it, just like the Taj Mahal and other buildings like that. The Jali provides very cooling uh, situation by Bernoulli's principle of the air blowing in through small trellises cools the space inside. So the corridors are not air conditioned. They are cooled by this jolly effect. But of course, you have kept the sun out by that process. But because this is uh, made of metallic uh, material, it affords its own way of bringing light inside. And of course, a pond around produces evaporative cooling. And the building is well shaded by its angle. It's got steep angles like this and not much of open to outside glass being a museum. Uh, this is an example of how we use public spaces under flyovers. Uh, this is not air conditioned. This is normally ventilated. But because of the clever use of the angles of the space which they have created below, this place is very comfortable at most times of the year. Of course, in the dead of winter, and at very hot times of the year, it may not be advisable to come here. But at most times of the year, the very cold places and the very hot places of the world are not very hot or very cold for very long. So there are a large number of months in the year. And we have this even in Mumbai. Uh, Mumbai uh, Municipal Corporation is doing a lot to keep uh, these open public spaces comfortable for uh, citizens of Mumbai to come and play and read and work and talk. Uh, this is for uh, older people or maybe, let's say, not so young people. This is for children. And so you can see these public, these are not public buildings. They, these are repurposed spaces, which are acting now as public spaces. And this is the Baha'i Temple in Delhi, designed some years ago. It's a beautiful place to go inside. It has a very good uh, composite building material, which keeps out the... Uh, cold in the winter and keeps out the heat in the summer and because of its unique design in the summertime all the heat goes up above it's very tall so the bottom remains comfortable it has very good flooring the flooring and the floor is connected to the pool which is around the surrounded by water and so the floor allows some radiant cooling of the people inside and it's a very comfortable space for people to come and sit and whatever may be your uh, your affiliation of religion or belief, this is a very nice, peaceful place to come and sit down. And here is our own uh, general post office in Mumbai, uh, near the VT station. It is not air conditioned, but it's very comfortable inside because of its large uh, spaces. In the days when it was constructed, we could build very tall heights, but it's in use even today. So you can see public buildings, well-ventilated, well-controlled. Of course, the officers and some spaces are air-conditioned over here. It's not all ventilated. Similarly, the, the VT terminus now, it's going to be one of the new modern uh, uh, stations of India where there will be air-conditioning on another part of this building. But the old part will continue to be like this, well-ventilated with fans. And uh, you can see the admission for coming inside is at the lower level, so heat doesn't come in, but light comes in at the upper level. 
So these are all the examples of building. This is the India Habitat Center. It is uh, designed in the 60s. Uh, there was a great architect, uh, Joseph Allen Stein, who joined hands with Doshi Balla Architects. And this building has got uh, wonderful use of spaces for shade, for light and shade. Light comes in uh, from uh, uh, specially angled, uh, shall we say, louvers in the ceiling, which don't allow much sun. They are sun blockers. And then the building itself is constructed with very slim and small windows. So you get light inside the building. The building has fairly thick walls. It has offices, it has cafeterias, it has many auditoriums and many working spaces for conferences. And so it's a comfortable building. Uh, many times of the year when it's comfortable in Delhi, you can be pleasantly sitting outside. And so it's a good building. And when it's not very cold or not very hot, outside is good. Otherwise, it is well controlled uh, by a, a pretty old uh, air conditioning system. But it has been refurbished for better use. They have made up the efficiency to good levels now. So what is the weather in Mumbai today? It's just hypothetically, I'm saying, suppose today is 32 degrees uh, wet bulb. Uh, sorry, dry bulb and 28 degrees wet bulb. It is not so hot, but it is fairly humid. So in the psychrometric chart, we are at a position where it is quite humid. So we do require air conditioning even at times like this, where the temperature is not so high, but the humidity is high. So we have to study, just as uh, my other colleagues on this panel have said, good design requires to understand the outside conditions at all times of the year so that you don't spend too much of energy when it's not required, but you certainly have to spend it when it's required based on the occupancy, based on outdoors, based on all the controls that you have inside. So our human body is comfortable over a wide range of environmental conditions. It depends, uh, the comfort depends on the air temperature, depends on the radiant temperature of the surrounding surfaces. So if you sit very close to a west-facing glass in the summertime, you will feel very warm, even though the air conditioning is working well, because that wall or that glass is radiating a lot of heat. So it must be shaded at that time. What is the humidity? What is the air motion? All these things affect your comfort level, right? And so uh, the recommendations by CPWD and even uh, the Bureau of Energy Efficiency is try to keep the temperatures closer to 24. You can go up as high as 30 degrees if you have the fan on and if the humidity is not very high. So there are several levels of human comfort. Adaptive, adapting to climate inside is what we all have to get comfortable with, just as people are comfortable who have less access to air conditioning. They are comfortable with fans, they adapt themselves, they dress appropriately. So I think public spaces have to recognize that there are several levels of comfort and people will adapt to them. There's no need to chill everybody inside a hotel, as many of our hotels do. So just some little historical perspective very quickly, because I think I'm going uh, a little slow. So buildings like this were cooled by evaporative cooling from a large lake close by. The water came in and gushed up these fountains because of gravity. And by evaporative cooling, the place was cooled inside to a comfortable temperature of maybe 22 degrees when it was 43 degrees outside, cooling by evaporation. And of course, the wonderful Taj Mahal has many ways in which it gets cooled. One of them is by radiation. So the whole block below the Taj Mahal is a very large block. It gets cooled by the winter and the whole winter months. And the cooling lasts for many, many, many months after that, radiating its cooling. And of course, the jolly effect for the, for the building skin outside, the wonderful marble, which is a great radiating surface, the river flowing by with access of evaporation. So, so many natural uh, phenomena are used for cooling a building like that. This is the institute where I studied in Kanpur. It had a district cooling uh, system, of course, a small one of a thousand tons, but because of the diversity and the applications, uh, such a plant was able to cool uh, the lecture hall, the lab, the library, the library had a nice fountain instead of a cooling tower. So that provided cooling comfort even outside, as well as served as the heat exchanger for rejecting heat of the air conditioning system. 
So we come to the major problem that we have, and that is we are a huge consumer of energy. We have a very large population. Uh, we consume a lot of energy, but the per capita consumption of electricity is very low in India because a certain portion of us, 10, 15, 20 percent, consume all the energy for comfort, for manufacturing, for production, for all sorts of things. So uh, two years back, we generated 1559 terawatt hour. Not, uh, that means we consumed. So terawatt hours is energy into the time. So this is something what India has, 1500, 1600. The next highest one is America, which is around 4000 terawatt hours. And higher than that is China, 7,000. Between these three countries, 12,000 terawatt hours of energy are used every year. And the whole world uses 24,000. So half the energy, three countries. So what do we have to do? We have to be mindful of saving energy where we can. That is the idea of presenting this to you. And it's something we must consider. We have already spoken about this in our discussion, indirect evaporative cooling, structure cooling systems, radiant cooling systems, all of these can do well to cool large public spaces. In the interest of time, I'm not going into the details of this, but any of you who's listening are most welcome to talk to me about any of these in more detail. And there's a radiant cooling system inside the gym. And so this lady who is doing her exercise doesn't have to endure any draft of air because the cooling is coming from the ceiling over here. Radiant cooling is the next big thing for cooling public spaces. Displacement ventilation, as in airports, cool from a lower level. You don't have to cool from above. So that produces uh, energy requiring to cool the whole space. Displacement ventilation, that is far more simply, right? Underflow air conditioning is similar to displacement ventilation. You use the floor below to uh, send air into these spaces. Chill beams are another good way of cooling. They divide the air conditioning between the sensible portion and the latent portion. And these are very popular. I went to a factory yesterday. They had a large amount of chill beams, which I found quite an unusual application of chill beams. So this is my last slide. Uh, it is a little bit uh, disturbing, but we are all aware of it. If you walk through a stifling city, you find people peddling rickshaws, hauling goods on their heads, constructing all the wonderful buildings we work in. But only a few people are protected by air-conditioned homes, offices. So we must have more public spaces. Those who can afford are in comfort. Those who can't are becoming worse. And our wet bulb is rising and rising. So staying comfortable by evaporation, by bodies evaporating, sweat,